So following on from setting up our timeline, we're now going to look at a few things here, how the layers work, how we move clips down to the timeline. And first of all, we'll just start by talking about how here we have three video tracks. Okay, so we can layer things in Premiere Pro video-wise, just like we layer things in Photoshop. So the bottom layer would be hidden by video two, which would be the second layer, and then video three. Um, if we're kind of compositing to things together, they stack up. In here as well, we've got some options for like locking tracks if we want to lock tracks. So one time you might want to do that is if you lay down an audio track um, and then you want to edit on the timeline um, and you don't want your edit tools to kind of chop up your audio track, you might uh, lock this track so that it keeps that audio uh, track locked, um, especially if you're making a music video or something like that. You don't normally want to chop up the original uh, kind of CD sound, original sound. And uh, then we can also see the time code here as well. Um, in our timeline. So basically, um, as we move this playhead along, you can see we're going to 1 minute 47 seconds and 7 frames, um, and we can drag this, or we can drag kind of in a more refined way um, along here as well. And actually, to really kind of see how this is working, we need to put some clips down on the timeline. So we'll bring our playhead back to the beginning. And then we're going to make a selection from the action movie. So if we come in here to around 45 seconds, we can see this lady dancing. And we're going to mark an in point. So this uh, second button at the bottom here allows us to mark an in point on our clip. And then if we play through, find the point when it cuts and we'll just take a couple of steps back and then we see the end of this clip will mark an out point okay so we've got these two buttons for marking in and out points and we'll get into shortcuts um, in a minute or two um, for kind of moving through clips a bit more quickly because using these buttons is a little bit cumbersome to actually work with so now we've got some options so basically um, here if we We've made our selection, we've marked our in and out point. So we can click on the clip right in the middle and drag down and it will drag it, will drag it to video one and you can see it drags down the, the video and the audio. And actually the audio track for this video is completely empty so we don't really want it um, on the, the track. So we're gonna have a look at how we delete that in a second. The clip is really small on our timeline because we're going from zero to like eight minutes here. So if we use this bar at the bottom, we can actually zoom in and it will zoom in and kind of center on the, the playhead when it's zooming in, or the select the clip that's selected. And we can also adjust the height of our clips as well by zooming in um, here as well. And you'll see, you'll see a thumbnail of that clip as you zoom the height a bit more. And then if we scroll, we can scroll along, okay? And now we can play on our timeline as well. So if we come back to the beginning, we've made our first edit by actually putting this clip down. If we press play, it will play through. If everyone has a look at their sequence now here, I'm going to go back to thumbnail view just because I prefer it. And we'll see uh, down here, the sequence has a little bit of a different icon uh, on the bottom right. So we can see the, the video clips have a, a kind of audio icon sort of here. And the sequence has a sequence icon on the bottom right, which is like trying to replicate a sequence. Um, if we right click on it, so if we right click here, we can go to the sequence settings and it will show us uh, kind of what we've got set up there, okay? Uh, it's kind of grayed out here, it's hard to see, but um, you should be able to see it on your screens. It says the 720 by 576 uh, dB PAL, which is not a square pixel, and then also some field information as well, which we don't need to know. So when you're editing your footage, you should normally see uh, 1920 by 1080 at 29.97 when we're actually editing your projects um, but you can always check that um, in the sequence settings okay so uh, once we've got a clip down on the timeline um, we can uh, use the selection tool that we've already got selected to trim it so we can shorten it on the timeline and what you'll see in the timeline now when we're shortening it is uh, this is the in point of the clip so we're seeing the first frame that I'm going to start on so Basically, up in the top right um, on my 
uh, program window, I see the frame that I'm going to let that start on. Okay, And then it will leave a gap at the beginning. Um, we can just drag it back. We'll look at some other editing tools for not leaving the gap soon, but for the moment uh, we get that gap. So basically we've shortened that clip. Okay, And as you're shortening it, you'll see the new duration popping up. So basically, as I'm shortening it here, um, my new duration is 1 second and 23 frames. We can see it that little gray box that pops up. Okay, and so I'm subtracting 19 frames off the duration of that clip in that particular edit. But as we were talking about before, this is non-destructive, right? So if I drag this back out here, I can drag some of that original footage back in, um, even to stuff that we don't want. Okay. So all that original footage is available even in this uh, short clip that we've added to the timeline. So it's completely non-destructive in that respect. If we want to remove the audio, which has no audio on here, we can right click um, and go to unlink. And that will unlink the audio and the video. And we can delete the audio track um, from there as well. And Let's add another clip to the timeline. So if we come into the monsters uh, edits here, we got some special effects. So we'll come to these dinosaurs fighting somewhere around 51 seconds. And actually what we'll do now is we'll introduce some shortcuts for, for making selections. So we can use our mouse um, and actually uh, drag along, but then instead of using the button for the endpoint, if we just press I on the keyboard, it will mark an endpoint. And if we move ahead to when this clip ends, we can press O and it will mark an out point. Okay. So we can mark in and out with those keyboard shortcuts. And then if we click on the button on the left below the video, when you hover over it, it should say drag video only. It will drag just the video track down to the timeline, so we don't have to worry about unlinking things and removing the video track. We can just drag the video down on its own. And what you want to do is drag it down and then make sure that it snaps to the end of that uh, previous video. Okay. So now we've got those two tracks on the, the timeline. So we cut from dancing to dinosaurs. So on our timeline now, we can uh, see a few things here with the time code. So um, when we're moving our playhead around, we can see where we are up here. Uh, so 5 seconds and 22 frames. As soon as we get to 24, when we go ahead one frame now, we're going to come to 6 seconds. So the 25th frame would be the, the next second in this, uh, in this example. So when you're working at 30 frames a second, you'd get to... 29 and then the next frame. Um, we can also see the duration of our edit here as well, so 8 seconds and 21 frames. And if we come to the fights video clip here, double click on that, we're going to introduce a couple of new shortcuts here. So um, using the play buttons here and scrubbing through is, is nice, um, but actually if you uh, put your kind of three middle fingers on the J, K and L keys, we can use J to play backwards, so that will re rewind uh, your clip. We can use L to play forwards, and K will pause your clip. Okay. And if we double tap J, it will rewind, and if we double tap L, it will fast forward. Okay. So let's find a good spot here. So let's find the streaming lady at around 49 seconds. So you'll notice that J, K, and L are handily next to I and O. So if we now come to the beginning here, we can press I, play forwards, and then play backwards until we see the last frame of that clip, and then press O, and then drag down just the video. And we can use J, K, and L on the timeline as well. We just have to make sure um, the right window is highlighted. So uh, the window that's highlighted is the window which you're controlling. So if we press here, 
then we're controlling the timeline and the program window. And the same for the sequence. And then if we press in the source window, we're controlling that window with JKNL. So you can rewind all the way back to the beginning and then press L to play through. Uh, well, if you use the up and down arrow keys, you can jump uh, from edit to edit. So if you use up and down, you can see I'm moving between the edit points. Yeah, so you can use the left and right arrow keys, but we can also hold down K and tap J or L as well to move forwards and backwards. So you can do everything with those three keys. So, so you can play forwards, pause, and then hold pause, and then come forwards and backwards, and then mark I and O on the timeline as well. So if we have an area to delete on the timeline, we can mark in an out point and then uh, delete as long as we have the timeline selected. And if we hold down option when we do that as well, it will ripple delete it. If you have in and out points marked up here um, and you want to clear them, you don't need to clear them. Um, if you mark a new in point, it will replace your old in point up in the, the program window, the source window, sorry. Um, but if you hold down Alt Option um, and X, it will remove the in and out points as well. So we can go through and make some, some different selections. So the Alt key uh, that was mentioned um, is if you've got your audio here and we hold down Alt, it will select just that individually without having to unlink it and we can delete it there. Or Option, Option or Alt. 